All right, everyone, welcome back. We're doing tension today. Uh, tension is the force that is transmitted through a string, rope, cable, or wire when it's pulled tight by forces acting from opposite ends. The tension force is directed along the length of the wire and pulls equally on the objects on the opposite ends of the wire. A little bit like confusing language, I would say, but as we do these problems, it should make a little bit more sense. All right, um, okay, this helps a little bit. All right, let's look at this example problem. A 44 kilogram child is hanging on a monkey bar with one arm. What would be the tension in that one arm? So we have this one arm here. There's a lot of tension in this arm, especially if you've ever been on monkey bars or something holding on, something like that. But what we should know is on this arm, uh, his weight is going to be pulling down on him, which is going to be 440 newtons. And then... But the tension in this arm is going to be holding him up, making sure he doesn't fall down. Of course, unless it's too much and then he falls. But that's going to be 440 newtons. This way, he's not moving. He's just staying there. And he's able to go up. If he, like, pulls himself up, this would be more. But anyway, complicating it. So, yes, 440 newtons. Next problem. Nope. A uh, 44 kilogram child is hanging on a monkey ball with both arms. What a cute child monkey. Uh, what would be the tension in each arm? Okay, so the I guess it's not really shown here, but we should know that this monkey is holding this with two arms right here. Okay, and if he's holding it with two arms, we know that the force of gravity of the monkey is equal to 440 newtons. However, the force of tension is going to be distributed. Some of it's going to go over here in this arm, and some of it's going to go in this arm. Okay. And they have to cancel out since it's not accelerating. There's going to be a force of tension of 220 newtons here and a force of tension of 220 newtons here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If it was 440 on both, that means that the monkey would be going up like that, but that's not what he's doing. He's hanging, okay, chilling. All right, moving on. All right, let's look at this example. How do the crane and monkey use their understanding of tension to their advantage? Look at it, pause it if you need, but... A few things here. Let's, I guess, look at the monkey. We can see the monkey is using many of his limbs in order to distribute the tension. So a lot of times monkeys will use their both their hands and their feet. And sometimes even if they have a tail, they'll wrap the tail around to uh, make sure that there's not as much ten the tension is distributed among the limbs. Okay? And if we look over here, we can see a few things. We can see that there's not just one cable carrying this heavy load. But this one, there's four cables, and it's distributing the amount of load onto each cable. Okay, so that's what it's doing. Uh, you can notice the crane uses multiple wires to lift things up, distributing the tension needed to lift up large objects. Some of the monkey uses many of its limbs, and sometimes even its tail while hanging. Moving on. All right, first math example here. A uh, five kilogram mass is hanging from a ceiling. What is the tension in the string? Okay, so even though, like, I know, like, we've never done problems with tension, like, all of these are basically the same. Um, if you know how to do them, you should be able to do other ones. So this weight here, or this mass here, we know it's going to have a uh, force of gravity, 50 newtons pulling it down. However, we know it's not falling down because there's a rope holding it. So that rope is a force of tension. We don't know what it is, but we do know that this uh, box here or mass here is not moving. So that means that these two need to cancel each other out. And this has to be 50 newtons. Okay. Okay, part B. If someone grabs the string and pulls upward, so it accelerates at 5 meters per second squared, will the tension, uh, will the, tension the string be more or less than uh, 50 newtons? So mm -hmm. now if there's an acceleration over here of five meters per second squared, you're pulling this up, what will happen to this force of tension? Will it become more, less, the same? So we could do the calculations, and you guys should know how to do that. However, we should also know if it's accelerating up this way, what that should tell us is the force of tension here, oops, needs to be, oops, needs to be more than the force of gravity. If it's great, if it's accelerating up, that means the force of tension has to be more, okay? If the rope that, gra uh, that grabbed, uh, if the person that <laughs> grabbed the rope, but then due to the weight of the rope, let it down to the ground, would the tension in the rope as the mass falls down 
be less or more than 50 newtons. So what's happening here is now, if this is getting lifted down or it's accelerating downwards, what's going to be happening is it's going to become less. Since this it's getting accelerating downwards, that means that the force of gravity is stronger than what's holding it up. In this case, that's going to be the force of tension. So that would be less. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And um, we'll be doing more problems. All right, let's look at this next example. A crane lifts a 30 kilogram crate with a single wire while accelerating the crate at a rate of 2.5 meters per second squ uh, squared. What is the tension in the cable? Uh, okay, so it's lifting this up. So let's kind of look at this. There's a, we know the crate's going to have a force of gravity, which is equal to uh, 30 times 10, 300 newtons. And then it's going to be lifting this up with a certain amount of tension. We don't know what that is, but we do know that the crate's going to be lifted up with an acceleration of 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's see how this is all going to work out. So sum of all force in the y is equal to mass times acceleration of y. So we have force of tension going up, force of gravity going down, mass of the crate, acceleration of the crate. Force of tension, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is 300. Mass of the crate is 30, and we know it's going up 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, now we could just put this into our calculator. I'm going to do the other side. 30 times 2.5, and I'm going to bring the 300 to the other side. So canceling out 300 and adding 300. So the force of tension is going to be 375 newtons. Okay. All right, moving on. A man pulls on a rope to bring up a 3.5 kilogram pail of water. The man pulls on the rope with a certain amount of acceleration. This causes the rope to have a tension of 44 newtons. With what acceleration did the man pull on the rope? Okay, so let's look at this. We have a force of gravity here. Uh, 3.5 times 10, 35 newtons. And we know this guy's gonna be pulling it up with a certain amount of acceleration giving it a, the rope a force of tension of 44 newtons. And we want to know what that acceleration is. All right, so let's figure that out. Sum of all force in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. So we have force of tension going up, force of gravity going down, mass of the pail of water, 3.5. Oh, sorry. I should just put m. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself and acceleration of the pail of water. Great. Force of tension is 44. Force of gravity is 35. The mass is 3.5. And we're looking for what acceleration is. So 44 minus 35. This is 9 is equal to 3.5 divided by 8. Oh, so not, now we're going to just do 9 divided by 3.5. And we get 2.57 meters per second squared. All right, moving on. Similar kind of question here. A woman pulls on a rope to bring up a five kilogram uh, pail of water. The woman pulls on the rope with a certain amount of acceleration. This causes the rope to, uh, to have a tension of 55 newtons. With what acceleration did the woman pull on the rope? Since I did this problem, I'm just gonna kind of do it uh, in the last one. I kind of explained it all well. So I'm just gonna do this one quickly. So we know there's a force of gravity on this pail and force of tension, she's pulling it up with an unknown acceleration that we're looking for. And then we're just doing sum of all force in the y is equal to mass times acceleration of y. So we know the forces in the y is 55 going up, that's the force of tension, and 40 going down, that's the force of gravity. We know that the mass of the pail of water is four kilograms, and we're looking for acceleration. So I'm just doing 55 minus 40 divided by four. If you want me to go slower, just kind of look at the last problem because it's very similar, um, but you should get around 3.75 meters per second squared. Okay. All right. Conceptual example number 10. Which string would have more tension? String one, string two, both have the same. Okay. So we have this string here, that's string one, and this string here, that's string two. Think about it for a little bit. Um, okay, and pause it if you don't want me to say, but it's going to be string one. And why is that the case? Well, string two over here 
is only carrying uh, this one right here. If we could imagine if that mass wasn't there, this string would just be dangling. But string one over here is carrying both of these masses. Okay, so that's why I would have more tension. Hope that makes sense. Okay, next example problem here. If M1 is equal to three kilograms and M2 is equal to five kilograms, what will be the tension in each of the strings? All right, um, there's many ways of doing this, but let's start with finding the tension of this st string here. So we know that this string here, the weight of this uh, box here is going to be pulling it down. And maybe I shouldn't draw the arrow too big, that's kind of misleading. But uh, so the weight of this box is going to be pulling it down. Uh, M2 is 50 newtons, 5 times 10. And but also the string is going to be holding it up. So the force of the tension is just going to be 50 newtons here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. String two is going to have 50 newtons of force holding it up. However, and I'll, I'll draw this to the side. String number one here has going to have two boxes pulling it down. Uh, three plus five, so that's going to be 80 newtons, and it's holding up both of them, to, so the force of tension of the first one is going to be, let me erase that, so, is going to be equal to 80 newtons, okay, because it's holding up both of the boxes. Well, that makes sense. I could kind of show it more mathematically, but I don't think I need to at this point. Um, okay. Moving on. All right, uh, that's it for tension. So I hope that all made sense. Let me know if there's any confusion in the comments. All right, see you with the next one with Bra Friction Bye.